The following interview segment was taken from Talking Wealth on Flix.net. That's F-L-I-X-X dot net. Talking Wealth is brought to you by Wealth Within and presented by Dale Gillam and Janine Cox. To watch the full episode, go to Flix.net, click on the On Demand section, and then click on Talking Wealth under the Finance section. Well, for more information, visit wealthwithin.com.au. Chris Collingwood, welcome back to Talking Wealth. How are you today? Oh, look, really good, Dale. It's great to be here again. Good. You're looking good for somebody who's been in lockdown for how long now? It's about 10 weeks, eight weeks? Oh, look, I don't know. It seems like forever. Um, we've had time to get used to it. <laughs> I think when you get a into double time. digits, you forget about it. You can't. You lose count. Yeah. I mean, it's all good. Um, we're allowed out to exercise, so we, we exercise every day and um, – uh, it just it's just an opportunity to to get a bit more work done without distractions. Yeah, that's what I was saying to somebody oh, today. Yeah. It's great. I don't have all the distractions of staff or anything else, and so I can get a hell of a lot more done. But I think I heard this morning that uh, here in Melbourne we're going for a world record of name number of days in lockdown. I don't think that's a proud wow. um, achievement. <laughs> no, I, a couple of weeks back I heard you hit over two hundred days in a year, hmm. which is pretty astounding. And the numbers are still going up, so and obviously it's not. It might it might be keeping the numbers well. It would be keeping the numbers less than they could mm. you know, would likely be, but still, it's still, it's still, they're still going up. I think I think the way out's going to be high levels of vaccination. Certainly in Sydney, we're getting high levels of vaccination. Mm. People, I think people had a bit of a scare, and um, even the skeptics are, are now getting vaccinated. Hmm. No, I think we the quicker we get out, the better for everybody's yeah. concern, and especially the yeah. small business people. Now, I know recently we chatted about creating desirable futures, so this really leads mm. straight into that. What's the desirable future we can have outside of lockdown? And and the second part was we also talked about managing anxiety, and I know we specifically talked mm. a little bit about that because I know with mm. COVID we've had a lot of people worrying about their future. They're worried and they're really anxious about what's going on, and, and it really is a psychological um, mind game, this whole lockdown. I know a lot of people are suffering from depression as well. But And you, and you really gave our viewers some great content, content mm. not just content, but tips and strategies on how to use mm. to manage anxiety. And I thought the tips you did on that were excellent. So if you haven't watched Chris's last video, go back and check on that one uh, because you do get some, give some great tips there. Today, um, I really wanted to chat more about managing self-performance, which it mm. really just makes sense to me as our next topic because mm. we're working from home a lot more and it doesn't look like we're going to get back to full-time office work. Uh, the whole work environment's changed and so managing self-performance to me is really, really critical because mm. you know we often see people desire a future that's different from their present and, you know, so therefore we need to look at that. How can they create their future? But I'll let you start talking mm. now. I'll shut sure. up because you've got the good stuff. Okay. So if you think about the prerequisite for managing your self-will is really managing your, emotion, your emotions. So in terms of the, the anxiety material, um, just like anxiety, any state, any emotional state um, in fact, I use a broader category than emotions. I, states, emotions are examples of states. So if a particular state in a culture is common enough in the community, it typically gets a name. Mm. So, for example, here in Australia, we, in English, we don't have Schadenfreude, which is uh, a German word, and it describes an emotion. But it's, it's common enough in Germany that they have a name, Schadenfreude, which basically means, roughly translated into English, to take pleasure in somebody else's misfortune. So it's not part of our culture, though in the last couple of years the word has crept in and people st started to use the word, but it's still fairly obscure mm. in, in the English-speaking world, yet it's a, it's a name of a state, so it's an emotion in, in, in Germany. And so... so the, the important thing is, so states is the bigger category, and um, all states, including emotions, have a structure. So the way a person, to, to, typically to be anxious, a person has to think about an undesired future or potential undesired future. A person to feel guilty will have to think about a past action that they did 
that's a violation of their values. So it has, to, it has a past component. Typically, happiness is when people are happy when important values are being met in the present. Uh, determination is about the future. Uh, resignation is about the past, past to present. Mm. So there's always so so that that's just a part of how uh, how states work. There are other components, but the important thing is that the message is all states have an underlying structure. And if you understand the structure of the state that you're experiencing, then you can deliberately change the state if it's not the most useful state for the situation. So when it comes to performance, high performance, for any task, excuse me, <clears throat> for any task, you're going to have an outcome. Mm. So you've got you're doing a project in the business, uh, you have an outcome uh, 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 that you you want to achieve. So for that particular type of activity to meet that outcome, there will be a state that is most appropriate for you to activate and express that's going to support your performance in getting, in, in getting that task completed. And depending on what the task is, you need different states for different tasks. So if I'm, if I'm managing other people, the type of state I need to be in to manage other people is going to be different to a state that I, I, I would be in that's how I'm learning, learning how a new piece of software works. Or uh, the state that I have, if I'm out having dinner, not that we can do this at the moment, if I'm out having dinner with my partner, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to be in a very different state mm. that's, that's conducive and appropriate for that situation. So part of the, 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 the I call it the game of the gods, is, mm. is the metaphor I use. It, it's having, it's being able to, being able to change your state being able to develop new states and being able to apply the most appropriate state for the situation and the outcome and task that you have to fulfill that outcome. And that's where you see with people very, very high performance. Because when you look at high performance, they, the, the quality of their performance is dependent upon the state that they're in. Mm. And, and, and they're very rare, these people, um, but I've been fortunate to meet a small handful of super high performers. And these people have choice about their state, their state and they have a suitable high performance state for the, the context, uh, the outcome, and whatever the task or activity it is that they're doing. And uh, it's just wonderful. Mm. Yeah, I, know, I know when you're looking at creating a future, Mm. Uh, for people, they, and whilst they get excited about the future, quite often are people it's a wishful thinking rather than a goal. Like, I'd like to yeah. have this, or I'd like to have that, or yeah. I would love to live here or drive this car or whatever else, and they're more wishful thinking. But people that do have a solid picture of their future and what they want to do, it's, they can get really yeah. excited. And I know, you know, they get this yeah. real burn in their stomach, and their their energy levels come up, and you can just see them. They they you know they're yeah. just feeling in a powerful state but they can also that whole can also really get into eliciting anxiety for them too because they then yeah. they go into those thoughts well what if i can't make that what if i fail what yeah. if this happens what ifs uh, so, and it is so really you, interesting yeah so you're fine with um um not with all people who have anxiety but for a lot of people a significant number of people who have anxiety they often have very high standards for themselves mm. So they've got a future they want to create. And now, I'll we'll come back to this, and uh, you said, and it's really solid. So that tells, you some, tells me something about um, a, a motivating, desirable future for you is represented in a way that it's solid, you know, it's reachable, it's something you can almost uh, grasp or grab. Mm. Um, and that, so there is a difference between how a particular individual would think about a wish and a want, a congruent want. And um, for some people, it's going to be solid. For others, it might be to do with the clarity of, of the image. It might be to do with how large the visual, the visual image is, how close it seems to be in time, uh, whether it's moving or whether it's still. But when people compare, it's a simple exercise. If a person thinks about a wish, something that, well, I wish things were different, or, mm -hmm. or, or I wish, you know, I wish that my children would do what I want to ask them to do, or I, whatever it might be, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, um, and and a want. I want this. I want it. I'm going to have it. And if, you, if people compare an example of each, there's going to be difference, differences mm. in how it's mentally represented. 
So quite often wishes are kind of more nefarious, um, less solid. Uh, they might be two-dimensional, uh, a little bit transparent, let's say. It might it typically is represented for a lot of people hmm. uh, further up. Often, often a want is represented in front, large, bright, yes. clear, 3D, kind of a sense of, of it being realistic, being real. Hmm. And um, so that's one thing that's interesting to explore. Now, coming back to anxiety and, and performance, a, a person desires an outcome. They're congruent about having it. It's compelling. It's plausible. It, and it's doable. And then, of course, the anxiety part of it would be if that person has doubts about their ability to perform or their ability to achieve that particular outcome. Mm. And so that would indicate that's the area they need to focus on. I mean, mm. anxiety is a signal to, it says, it's like the Boy Scouts, it says, be prepared, get prepared for yeah. the future you want to have. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know of my wife, if there's something going on and she she's having that, getting frustrated because something's not working because she has that desire to it's got to be perfect it's got to yeah. be great it's got to you know be high quality etc cetera, etc cetera. and she's getting anxious and frustrated with herself and, and when I walk up I go how can I help mm. and as soon as I start saying that she starts to calm down because it's like oh now now Dale's going to come in and help as well and I'm not that I'm going to fix it for her but it's like yeah. what do I need to do to help you to get through this and straight away everything changes because I know you basically what you're saying mm. is performance is a function of state so yeah. and the state that she was in was anxious and frustrated yeah. um, but then state is a function of physiology which is also talking about yeah. and, and getting into breathing patterns and everything else to help yeah. you manage that so how about we give some people some tips about how can they manage that state if they're okay. getting into that sort of state? Yeah, and, mm. and there's one extra piece. It's also uh, the physiology and the breathing. It's going to be affected by the person's mental process. Okay, yep. So it's a mental process aspect as well. Um, but in terms of simple, straightforward methods to apply to manage state, <clears throat> once again, it's, it's movement. Um, uh, um, I understand that Elvis Presley, the, the late Elvis, Elvis Presley, had a belief that you know when facing difficulties, the most important thing to do, whatever's going on, is to keep moving. Mm. And uh, I think that's really good advice. So when when a person's moving, it is it is going to. So when a person is in a state uh, stuck, there's a lack of movement. Mm. So a person's depressed, they hardly move at all. Shallow breathing, they're looking down. You know, or when a person is anxious, that there's a particular physiology for that and they can get stuck there. So the key is if you're out, simple things If you, for us here in Australia with lockdowns, if you go out and do, your, you do some aerobic exercise every day, that's going to keep things fluid, give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of changing your state. Mm. Uh, breathing, uh, breathing exercises, uh, one of my favourite is um, we call it the breath, breath of life. Uh, you breathe in. Uh, through your nose to a count of five, hold for five, and then breathe out through your mouth to a count of five. Mm. Hold for five and repeat in, mm. in through the nose for five, hold for five, out through your mouth for five. Do that for five, six, seven minutes, and, you st and that will calm a person down if they're anxious. Yeah, I um, understand. Then we're getting into psychology. Then <laughs> that's, that, now that's a little bit more, it takes more self-awareness to go, oh, yeah, I'm picturing all the things that could go wrong, okay? So then shifting, if that's what the person's doing, they recognize that they're, they're making mental images of how, how things could be a disaster in the future, how things would go wrong. Then think about, go back to the outcome. What's the outcome here? What do I mm. want to actually do? <clears throat> and what's the intention for that outcome? What's that for? And then based on that, start going, okay, so what resources, just like you said in terms of assisting your wife, what resources are required to achieve that? And how do I, and then the question, how do I go about getting and organizing those resources? So now I'm focusing on developing the resources required to have that future, and that's going to change the state. Yeah, I have to agree with you, mate. I mean, when I was presenting all the time on stage, as, as you know, and you've done this a million yeah. times yourself, you know, in the, especially in the early days, my 
coaches were saying to me, okay, well, you need to get moving. You need to open up your diaphragm, do yep. stretches around your chest yep. and your shoulders, your neck, get like fluidity, you know, like moving, you're stretching your muscles around your neck and your shoulders, your legs, get going. But while I was doing that and doing stretches and everything else, I was still visualizing at the time what I was going to present, how I, was, how I saw the presentation running in my mind mm. while I was doing all that. Yep. And then just before I'd go on to a stage, I'd then start the breathing and breathing deeply and getting the oxygen in my system yep. and doing what you're talking about yep. and then run on and do a great performance or, or great yep. presentation. So I, I really understand what you're talking about, but it doesn't matter whether you're on stage presenting something or whether it's going into mm. work, into a meeting, into an interview, whatever that is, you can do all of this. But um, oh, no, yes. I really would love to chat more with you about this, but we've run out of time again. We just seem to run out of time so fast, mate. <laughs> I know it is, but it's some really, really good tips for people to to help manage their state and get performance. Yes. Now, I mean, we're going to have you back multiple times on here, so you know Fantastic. people will be able to build the story anyway about what you're talking about and how yeah. they can get peak performance. But before we go, can you tell people how they can find out more about Chris Collingwood? Okay, so we've got a couple of sites, but the best site, um, uh, the new one, is NLP. Edu for education. Dot au for Australia, so it's nlp.edu.au, and uh, so that's one very good way to, to to find out more about what we're doing. Uh, we've got contact forms and so on, and also um, I'm fairly fairly active on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So you, you, um, uh, there's uh, I think there's only a small number of people called Chris Collingwood on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, I'm the only one in Sydney, and um, they can always send me you know, connect and send me a message. So, Fantastic. Yeah. All right, yeah, and you've got—I know you've got some great courses on your website too. So they should check those out if they want more depth about what you're talking about, because they really are very, very good courses that I would suggest people do. I mean, I've been around you for twenty odd years, and I know how you teach and what you teach and the quality of that. So that would be my suggestion for people if you're interested in what Chris is talking about. Just check out his website and what he's doing. But Chris Collingwood, thank you for being on Talking Wealth. I really do look forward to chatting with you again soon. You take care, mate. Yeah, thank you very much, Dale. It's a pleasure. For more information on our guest in today's episode, visit the link on screen right now. For more Talking Wealth, visit flicks.net, click on the On Demand section, and then click on Talking Wealth under the Finance section. That's F-L-I-X-X dot net. Or visit wealthwithin.com.au, where we have hundreds of informational videos, live shows, and Talking Wealth podcasts. Talking Wealth was voted number three in stock market podcasts globally in 2018 by Feedspot. For more information on our courses, visit wealthwithin.com.au.